Welcome to HUC Economics Made Easy. Here I make some of the harder economic concepts easier to understand. And one of the first economic concepts that year 11 students often have questions about is opportunity cost. But hey, if you're in year 12, don't switch off yet because we're gonna build on these concepts later in the course. All right, let's start off with the definition. At the start of the economics course, we learn of the problem of scarcity. We have unlimited wants, but only limited resources to satisfy them. Therefore, we must make the choices of which wants to satisfy and which wants to sacrifice. The next best alternative that is foregone for satisfying one want is the opportunity cost. The production possibility frontier, or PPF, is a graphical representation of opportunity cost. It is also known as the production possibility curve, or PPC. It is a model that shows the combination of two products that an economy can produce if it used all of its resources to their full capacity. To draw a simple PPF, we must make the following assumptions. The economy is only producing two products like apples versus oranges. The state of technology and the quantity of resources are fixed. And thirdly, all resources must be fully employed. Now, let's draw a PPF using this production possibility schedule, which is what we call a table of data in economics. Let's start with labeling our axes and plotting the points from the schedule. Here's a hint. If you know it's a straight line, you could just plot the ends and then join them. The schedule and curve shows the combination of apples and oranges that the economy could produce if it used all of its resources to their full capacity. As you can see, if we used all of our resources for apples, we would be on this end of the PPF, making zero oranges and 200 apples. If we used all of our resources on oranges, we would make 100 oranges and zero apples. If we split our resources between the two, we'll be operating on the line and making combinations like 100 apples and 50 oranges. Now, what does this model have to do with opportunity cost? Well, this model is built on the concept of choice. Because of scarcity, any combination we choose will involve sacrificing the alternative one. Let's use our apples and oranges example to show how to calculate opportunity cost. Let's start at the extreme and put all of our resources into producing apples. We'd have 200 apples and zero oranges. Now, let's say we want to produce 25 oranges. By moving from zero oranges to 25, we'd be reducing our apples from 200 to 150. This shows that to produce 25 oranges, we would have to give up 50 apples. This is the opportunity cost. Let's say we want even more oranges. If we increase production to 75 oranges, that would bring the total opportunity cost up to 150 apples that we had to sacrifice to make these 75 oranges. And if we shift all of our resources to oranges, we'd make 100 oranges and the opportunity cost is 200 apples because that's what we've given up in total. One more helpful skill to learn is figuring out the per unit opportunity cost of producing each good. Let me show you how to do it. If producing 200 apples has an opportunity cost of 100 oranges, the opportunity cost of producing each apple would be 100 oranges divided by 200. Half an orange is the opportunity cost for each apple produced. On the other hand, the opportunity cost of 100 oranges is 200 apples. So the opportunity cost of each orange is 200 apples divided by 100. Two apples are sacrificed for each orange produced. This per unit opportunity cost is called the marginal rate of substitution, or MRS. The MRS can also be observed in the gradient of this PPF. And so, we've covered how to draw the PPF and calculate opportunity costs. I'm now going to explore some factors that could change the PPF. Let's look back at the assumptions that we fixed earlier. Let's see what happens if we change this middle assumption about technology and productivity. Improvements in technology or productivity would mean that this economy could increase its production with the current resources. This would mean that the economy has increased its productive capacity and the PPF would shift outwards. If the technology or productivity improvement applies only to apple production, it would look like this. We would shift the line outwards only from the apple side. An example would be if we introduced an apple specific fertilizer or if workers received training and gained expertise for apple farming. On the other hand, if the improvement applies only to orange production, the line would shift outwards from the orange side. If the improvement applies to both apples and oranges, the whole line would shift outwards. An example would be gaining a tractor that can be used for harvesting both apples and oranges more efficiently, because this means we can make more of both. The discovery of new resources would have a similar effect. They would shift the PPF outwards depending on the applicability of these resources. For example, gaining arable land to grow either apples or oranges would shift the PPF outwards, because again, we can produce more of both. Another assumption we could relax is that all resources are fully employed. If we're experiencing unemployment of resources, the economy would be operating inside the PPF, like this red combination. 
It doesn't usually shift the PPF because the potential for high production is still there. We're just producing a smaller combination because we're not using our land, labor, capital enterprise to this full potential. Now, there's one more assumption that we've been working with up to this point. We've been assuming that the PPF is a straight line. This means that all of the economy resources are perfectly substitutable between apples and oranges. But in reality, some resources more suited to growing apples and some suited to growing oranges. So, as we move to the extremes, we will lose some productive capacity. For example, if we decide to only make oranges, some apple-specific resources will be lost, causing us to lose productive capacity at this extreme. And same on the other side, we will lose some apple-specific resources if we only make apples. This leaves us with this concave-shaped PPF. Okay, one last concept to explore. There are certain choices that we make with the PPF that can have future implications. Consider this PPF, where we must choose between consumer goods and capital goods. Consumer goods are items for satisfying current or immediate wants, like a holiday. On the other hand, capital goods are items that can increase efficiency and therefore help to satisfy future wants and needs instead of today's, like machinery or education. What would happen if we focused more on producing capital goods? It would lead to increased productive capacity in the long run, allowing us to be able to produce more of both consumer and capital goods. The PPF would shift outwards, but the opportunity cost is the ability to satisfy current consumer wants. What if we went the other way and focused only on producing consumer goods? We'd be happy today, but in the long run, we would run out of resources and be able to produce less of both. This model highlights the importance of investing into new technology and sustainability, even if it means sacrificing some wants today, because it improves our productive capacity and the standards of living in the long run. And with that, you should be able to define opportunity cost, interpret and construct the PPF, as well as calculate opportunity cost. And like I mentioned before, you need to be familiar with these concepts, not just in year 11, but into year 12. Opportunity cost and PPF is referenced in the year 12 concepts of free trade as well as environmental sustainability. And hey, if you need more help, check out my worksheets. They're made up of exercises and sample answers to help you understand economic concepts and improve your writing. Just order them from my website. 100% of the proceeds will go to charity. I also offer essay feedback and tutoring services. I'll guide you through your assessments and give you feedback from the perspective of a HSC marker. Just reach out to me via my website, email, or social media. I'll put the links in the description below. And if this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share this video. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC Economics easy for you. See you next time.